So I'm going to change the pace. I'm going to talk about something closer to the front end, maybe even about the design a little bit here. I'm going to talk about animation. Uh, more specifically, a UI animation from the small part of animation. And the examples I'm going to use today are going to be based on React, but hopefully they'll be useful no matter what you use, whether it's Vue or whatever approach or tools you're using. So my story, a few years ago I got into CSS animation. I started writing and blogging on a website called cssanimation.rocks. Along the way, I made all sorts of interesting examples of animations and interesting projects. But I always came back to the smaller animations, things that were actually helpful for users more than just being big and flashy. And today I want to focus on that. I'm going to narrow down a bit and talk about ways we can make our apps more useful with subtle UI-based animations and hopefully do so in a way that's consistent and reusable through our apps. So what do I mean by UI animation? Well, anything from changing views to interactions like clicking on buttons or hovering on links, or even situations where content might change on a page, like if a list is updated or if uh, new information is added to some kind of view. Uh, these are all situations where something changes, and when something changes in the UI, it's, it's a place where we can use animation to hopefully make it better. So ways we can make, well, use animation to make things better in terms of the way people use our apps include things like highlighting changes, so if I have a list of items on a page and I add a new one, it's not natural to have it suddenly just appear or have a list of items suddenly change. We're not used to that. It's better if we have some kind of animation or transition to show that. We can also improve the perceived page, uh, speed of a page. You've seen on the likes of Facebook where it would have some preloading boxes that would show when content is still loading. It gives the perception that it's still moving and ha stuff's happening. Uh, or we can use animation to explain when things are happening. So. If something changes in our content and wants to use there's some way to tell people that happened. It's very easy to miss usually, but if you use animation, it can make it much harder to miss. And when we think about animations, we, have, we think about designing animations. It's, there are lots of tools we can use to do this. We can use tools like Principle or Framer or even mocking up um, HTML and CSS prototypes. But to be honest, we don't often do that. Often animation that ends up being something we do last. Uh, while building our apps. And that's fine, but it can result in situations where having to make a decision on the fly or when building a feature can result in the animations not being consistent or maybe not matching other animations in the app. Uh, it's best to try to avoid ways of that happening because it can result in the app being less consistent and maybe less professional as a result. Uh, so it's good to try to keep things consistent. Now, as we build things, we can use all sorts of tools. Um, in the, world, in the React world, we have things like React Transition Group or React Spring. These are handy tools for using when content changes or when you want to introduce animations that maybe are calculated based on real-world physics. Uh, we can reach outside of React and use tools like GSAP from Greensock, which is a great platform really for making all sorts of complicated animations. Or we can step back into more simple approaches like using CSS. Um, today I'm going to focus mostly on the CSS and how to use that, along with a package that I made in your form called React Animation. That will hopefully be useful for us for the way we animate our UI. So with that in mind, let's code. I'm going to show some examples here. So here we have a demo store. And let me know if you can't hear me, by the way. I'll try to lean into the microphone a bit. We have a store here, which has three products. And we can navigate between the products. Uh, within each product, we can change the category of the product, and that results in a change of the price. Uh, we can add it to our cart, which changes the text on the Add to Cart button, and then after a, a pretend delay, it then changes it back. And lastly, there's a change at the top right corner where the number of items in the basket changes. These are all changes within our app, and each one is an opportunity to add some kind of animation. So what I'd like to do is to put together some animation, hopefully that's simple and helpful, while also consistent and reusable, so we can then apply that to other situations without having to write lots of code again and again. So here's the app. It's a basic Create React app. All I've added is some components. Uh, and within the components, I've actually wrapped each using a, a package called Styled Components, which wraps each component in a kind of a CSS layer, which is useful because then we can pass in props to the CSS. And one of the useful props we can really pass in is a theme. And this gets into the reusable part. If we set up themes, we can then create values which are reused in multiple places throughout our CSS. And so what I'd like to do is actually create an animation which I'll reuse in multiple places. 
So to do that, I've opened up the theme index file, which is a set of objects which is then passed into the, through the theme provider into each of these components. Uh, I'll begin by making some keyframes. So in the spirit of keeping things simple, we're going to make a keyframes object with a kind of reusable animation called show. It's a string called show. And it's just going to be made up of the end state of an animation, the uh, two part, where it's going to have an opacity of one and a transform of none. So I've set up some keyframes here. It won't do much by itself yet. But what this is going to do is, if we apply this animation, it'll change from whatever state it's in, uh, hopefully with the opacity of zero, to an end state and opacity of one and no transform. Make use of this, I'll create a second object here called animations. And it'll follow a similar pattern. It'll have a an animation called show, which itself will be a string as well. And this string will actually be made up of the CSS to apply this keyframe animation to this to, to whatever we're using it on. So the animation will be show. It'll have a duration, say 500 milliseconds. Uh, the easing function of just ease out and forwards, so it ends in the finished state. And lastly, what we'll do then is we'll actually inject the keyframes we want to use with this animation. So what we have here is an object called animations dot show, which actually injects the animation code as well as the related keyframes that it needs to use for the animation. <coughs> I'll export that. And that's now something we can use in the app. So to use that, in case I please, um, let's go to the product page, yeah. components product page. Um, first thing we're going to do actually is we're going to look at this transition here, which is changing between pages. Currently it's quite sudden. And on, on apps, it can be so fast that maybe you might not even notice. And usually web pages, we expect it to take a second or two to change pages, but that's not always the case with apps. So let's put an animation in here. In the CSS part, we can inject it here in the same way we just put any other props into style components. Using props dot theme dot animations dot show. And this should just actually insert the code we wrote a minute ago. Uh, we can also then um, make it more obvious maybe by adding some extra rules, such as an animation delay, uh, just to give a slight gap between changes and make it easier to notice. And one thing also to make more sense here, this doesn't have any beginning state, so let's make sure it's actually invisible before the animation starts. Sorry, it's not visible, invisible. So go back to our app. And now when we change, we see an animation between each of the pages. So the handy thing here is that this is reusable. We can take the same code and we can then apply it even within the same component but to a subcomponent, say the content part. And we can change the delay, maybe make the delay a bit longer, 500 milliseconds. Again, keeping our opacity of zero. And then we can play with the transform as well. So if we add a transform to it, say we want to translate on the y-axis, a small amount, say 20 pixels. This should reuse the same code again. And every time it actually shows the page, it'll fade the animation up and into place. We could go deeper and maybe have staggered animations for the headings, for the paragraph text, for the various parts. But I think this makes the point. So that's one way we can create reusable, simple CSS animations. But there are some other changes in the app. For example, when the price changes here. I'm looking for situations where things change, we get a bit more involved. So to save some time, I'm going to use a package that I've created before called React Animation. And this is a set of helper components that you can wrap your content with in a React app. And it will look for situations like when content changes and then apply an animation to it. The first component is called Animate on Change. And as you can see in the example here, make it a bigger, 
simply wrap content with it, and when the content changes, it'll automatically apply a fade effect by default. You can change the duration, you can change the animation types, or even custom animations. So let's give this one a go. So I've already taken the step here of importing animate on change. So we can go ahead and use this on our code. So the first thing is we want the animate on uh, we want the price to change. So to do that, let's look at where the price is. Here we have current price. So first, we import our animate on change component. With that, we can use this as a component just to wrap any content we want. So we'll start with the current price here. Save that. Go back to the demo. Ah, then you find my mistake. So let's take a look here. I think I have not taken into consideration the braces. So we'll put the braces back around the actual variable. Try again. This time, the price fades. And one of the benefits of this is because there are two things happening. I'm clicking a button over here, and over on the other side, the price changes. If it changes suddenly, I might miss that. But because there's a small fade effect, even that much of an animation can make it easier to see the difference. So let's try looking at the Add to Cart button. So where is it? Here it is, the same component. What I'll do is I'll wrap this, but I'll go a bit further and actually change the animation on it. So rather than the default animation, let's actually set the animations. So we can use animation in, and uh, there are a set of pre-built animations we can use for this. One of which I do like is called animation, I'm oh, sorry, bounce in and bounce out. Let's apply those. And this time, the text bounces each time. In terms of the choices of animations, on the page itself I've set up, we can show, we can see these. There are quite a few to choose from, and you can even make your own. Uh, lastly, it's easy to miss, but on the top right corner, every time we add something to the cart, there's a change in the total. We want to draw attention to that, so let's see if we can use the same component to do that. So, let's look at the cart button. I believe it's in here. Here we have a span with the class name cart button total <coughs> containing a total. So we'll begin by importing animate on change. And again, we'll wrap it, but this time we'll go and change the span to an animate on change component. This way, it'll pass through the class name and still apply that class name to the animate on change, animate on change span, so we'll keep the styles. And we can then apply the animation in. And the animation out. But one thing that might be useful here is it's happening at the same time as the other animations, and that can be distracting. You maybe want to make it happen after the others have finished to draw the attention to the cart icon in the corner. So to do that, we can mess around with the duration. So the duration out setting in this case is the time it takes for the animation to start until it removes the object from the scene. So if we make this a longer duration, like two seconds, the result should be that after I add it to the cart, the number disappears, then it fades back in. It's a subtle effect, but it means that it's the last thing that happens on the page, which might make it easier to notice, and then hopefully people click on the add to cart icon. So, to finish up, there's one thing we missed. When we change products, there's a flash where the image doesn't show, because it's loading externally. It takes a while to load, even though it's styled with a background color and with shadows. So we can use another component called hide until loaded to handle that. Up here we have hide until loaded. It works very similarly to the uh, React, to the animated change. 
except we give it an image to say when only show the component when this image has loaded. So let's apply this. We go to the image and variations, look for the image. Here it is. So what we'll do is we'll firstly actually re import the right components, hide until loaded, and then wrap the image tag <coughs> with hide until loaded. We'll tell it which image to wait for. It's actually the image. We'll close that tag. And what that does is apply a on load event to the image, and when it says loaded, it will then fade it in. There we have it. So, what we did is we've added page transitions. We've used a theme based approach, something that can be easily reused and hopefully make it easier to scale larger sets of animations without losing track of where they all are in larger projects. Uh, we've animated lots of small elements in the UI, the prices, add to cart buttons, using Animate on Change. And we've also hidden images until they're ready to load using Hide Until Loaded. And if you want to check it out, you can look up on, Gear, on GitHub, nearform slash React Animation, and you can download the package we used there today. And if you want to see the example today, uh, it's available on my GitHub at React Animation Example. And that's me. Thank you very much.